Hey girls, it's your old teacher, Miss Cara or Coach Cara. I'm making this video because I'm actually going to create a video series for you. Um, there's so many things that I wanted to teach you and cover with you this school year um, and that we had written up or I had written up on the activities overview that you had. And so what I'm going to do here on this channel is create videos for you, exclusively for you, my girls in Saudi. Um, so many topics that I was excited and looking forward to teaching you and going over with you this year. The other reason I'm making this video is to explain what happened. Um, for some of you, you've even reached out and you've said you were mad at me, um, you were mad that I left, that I didn't say goodbye, and to be honest with you, that ugh, killed me a little bit when I heard that because that is not at all what happened. Um, so I would have never, never, never just left. So we're going to get into what happened. Um, I have a little bit of a timeline to break it down so you can understand and um, you can come to your own conclusions. Um, I do hope that you're having a great school year and that this next semester is awesome for all of you and um, I just wish you all so much success and um, luck in the rest of your middle school and high school careers and then on into the future. And just so you, for you to know that the video series I'm creating here on this channel is for you to know I'm never further than like an email or a text away. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. So what happened? What happened? Um, so break down just a little bit of a timeline so you can understand. Um, <clears throat> back in November, uh, November 8th, it was a Thursday, and um, uh, the new director, I know some of you call her Barbie and some of you call her old Barbie, so the OB, let's say, um, she had been there approximately three or four weeks at that point, so still very, very new. Um, yeah, I want to say around three or four weeks. Um, no, I think it was, it was less than that. Yeah, somewhere between two and three weeks, let's say. And um, <clears throat> actually, at school. So that was the day that um, I was notified that we were no longer going to have our classroom, uh, Classroom 360, and, um, and that we were going to be moving our, over into this new uh, classroom for our health lessons. And um, it came as a, quite a shock to me, and that's when I also came and presented it to um, first period. And um, you can probably see I was bummed. Um, I certainly wasn't, uh, you know, falling over and and being uber dramatic, but I was really bummed and I could definitely see from you guys that you were bummed as well um, because it did come as quite a, a shock. We'd had that classroom the last year before and then this year and also it had been the PE room um, classroom for two years prior to even before I came on. So it was a bit of a shock. I think the other thing that was hard to understand is there was really no explanation um, as to why and um, um, I was simply told it was going to be used for something else, air quotes. <laughs> so, um, yes, it's just a classroom, yes, it's just a room, um, but as any one of you know, aesthetics plays into kind of our psychological and emotional well-being. Um, the counselor had created an energy and a vibe in her room the way that she set it up, and that was, that was for a reason. Um, it was to uh, create a, a feeling of a safe space, a space that you could feel comfortable, where you could talk, you could share, um, or you could just, you know, have some quiet time. And she was always very open to that, um, the old school counselor. Um, that's really how I saw my class and my classroom because of the nature of this, the subject that I was teaching you guys. Um, so we collectively kind of created that energy in that space with um, natural lighting and places to sit on the ground with yoga mats and the, and the plants and the calm music and so forth. So um, that that room was created like not only by me, but it was for, for me and for us. So I was bummed and you were bummed and you expressed that. So what ended up happening is I ended up getting a warning letter because I had shared with you um, that we were no longer going to be in that classroom and that we were gonna be in the new classroom. So that came as a shock to me um, because I was told that um, I had um, uh, divulged school secrets, again, air quotes, like I had um, basically told something that I, I shouldn't be saying. Um, I didn't quite understand that because I was simply telling you girls we were not going to be in that classroom anymore. Um, 
and that we were going to be in this new place because the next, um, that was the end of the school week. And so the following week you needed to know that. Um, so anyway, that came as a shock to me. So that was my first warning letter. And, um, I had never gotten a warning letter at the school ever the whole past year or this, this school year. So it really did come as a shock. Um, again, this was a new person in the school. Um, she didn't really know me yet. Um, I'd asked her many times to come and observe our classes and, um, she never took that opportunity. Um, she did, she did, however, say at one point that she went to the gym and she never saw us there within those first three weeks. I thought that was interesting and, and odd because um, we had played quite a few uh, sports. I think we did uh, soccer, badminton, and uh, basketball. So um, there was one week we did yoga and the other other weeks we were in the gym. So, um, you know, <laughs> so that was that. Um, but I think that she just, just made up her mind, I think, very strongly. She had already had some sort of an opinion about me. And um, what proceeded to happen after that was... Um, I think lack of better words, uh, the, the best word I can come up with, I was targeted or I was bullied, if you will, um, because I ended up getting um, three more warning letters. Um, I got th four warning letters in the span of 10 days. Um, so upon the first warning letter, which didn't make a lot of sense to me, um, I went ahead and did a little research and I kind of found some stuff about this particular uh, director online and um, not um, very positive things about her um, prior work experience. Uh, we all have a past, so you know, we all like, can learn from our experiences and our mistakes. So um, it is what it is. Um, I thought, however, uh, whatever was going on um, from her perspective that you know, we're adults, let's work it out. Um, I had already been there. I already had a rapport with you students, uh, with some of the parents, with the teachers. With the administration so um, I was really genuinely enjoying being there and teaching you guys and looking forward to teaching you the rest of the school year. Um, my contract would be up in um, mid-July uh, or the end of July and teach you all the way through the beginning of May and um, that was that. So <laughs> what ended up happening was, um, let's see, I've got my little dates on um, Let's see, that, that following week, I actually was uh, really sick, as, as I shared with you guys. Um, I felt nauseous. I had, like, lots of anxiety and, and just, um, uh, like, physical symptoms. So I was home um, that entire week, if you remember, Sunday through Thursday. I went to the hospital three times, so I had three separate, um, you know, uh, absent, um, uh, absent from work notes from, from the hospital and um, got medication. It was it was a pretty hardcore week because I really don't normally get sick. Um, so this was obviously more of a physiological. I was really kind of um, shocked, I think, by this. And also I'm very sensitive to um, energy and negative energy. And I think um, we can all kind of agree that there's uh, been a real shift and change in the school and, and the energy. Um, so I could tell that I was having, um, you know, just kind of physiological symptoms from being around this new negative energy uh, for lack of, again, for lack of better explanation, kind of like a dark cloud. So I was gone that whole week and then I came back and taught you guys again Sunday, Sunday through Thursday. And um, it was on, um, let's see, I got that during that week, I got the um, additional two warning letters. So now I had three. And then if you remember, we, um, we had that really intense rain day that was on a Sunday and everybody went home. So that was the following week. Everybody went home and, um, this was in late, late November. And, um, so it would have been the 20, let's see. Yeah. Uh, November 25th. Just looking at my notes. Um, and uh, so we went out home half day, so we came back on, um, that would have been Sunday, so we came back on Monday, second work week, uh, work day of the week, and um, at the end of the school day, right um, between that 2.30 and 3 o'clock mark, I was called back in, I was given a fourth warning letter, and also told I was being terminated. 
immediately and I was also told to not come back to school. Now this is really key because um, first of all I was shocked. <laughs> Second of all, um, being told to not come back as if I was, you know, some sort of criminal, um, it really, it was really a shock to the system to be, to be told that so aggressively. Um, so that is why I was not back then on Tuesday to teach you guys. And, um, that's also when the schedule completely got changed. What I found out was, um, that they were waiting to officially terminate me before they rolled out the new PE schedule because they had made the new PE schedule with all the teachers and kind of moved everything around where they kind of lumped two and three classes together. Um, they had made, been working on that schedule over the weekend without my name on it. So they knew that they were going to terminate me. And um, what I ended up doing was a bit of research about the um, Saudi Arabian uh, labor laws. And um, whether you know this or not, I learned this. Um, so for an employer to give an employee a warning letter, they can give the warning letter, but they have to wait 30 days until they can give a second warning letter regarding uh, like the same kind of incident. The idea with this is not to um, target or bully the employee, but it's to um, uh, you know work on work on whatever the issue was to kind of support the employee to do better or for whatever the issue was for, for it to be resolved. The second warning letter can be uh, issued uh, and then again for a third warning letter, which can then lead to termination for the same reason, um, has to wait another 30 days. So we're looking at term, a warning letter, 30 days, warning letter, 30 days, warning letter, 30 days. So 90 days have to, um, trans uh, to, have to pass for um, an employer in Saudi Arabia to then fire, uh, just to terminate, to terminate the contract. And as an expat, um, we leave our home country in the comfort of our home country and we sign a contract and we come to new countries as expats to work. And that contract is to protect us just as much as it is to protect the employer. So what was really interesting was I did the research. I ended up getting a lawyer. Um, I hadn't gone to the labor board yet, um, but I was already speaking with the, the consulate because I was trying to get some information. What was happening? Um, here I had, um, you know, uh, how many months left of the school year. Again, I had no prior uh, negative experience with you guys or with the parents or anything um, prior to this, prior to this new director, the OB. So um, the fact that from the point of her arriving to five weeks, which is her still even being in her probation time, Five weeks had passed and that's when she terminated me. So within five weeks, I mean, she had didn't even take the time to come see my classes, get to know me. I mean, this clearly uh, was, a, was a personal vendetta, was some sort of personal um, issue she was taking with me. Um, so she clearly just wanted to get rid of me. So according to the labor law though, this is illegal. So um, what she did was illegal. Um, when you resign, which is totally different, when you resign from a company, um, you're saying, I'm, I'm the employee, I'm breaking the contract. And then you can usually give about 30 days notice and you can still work those 30 days. I know several of the other teachers who have resigned um, because they were bullied uh, into resigning. Um, they work those 30 days and then uh, the contract is over and then they can move on, get their um, egg final exit and so forth. So what happened with me was that I didn't resign. I didn't want to resign. I didn't even, wasn't even thinking about resigning because I liked what I was doing with you guys. I liked the job. I, I had a whole life in Saudi. I had a beautiful home. I had a community. Um, I had a yoga studio, a gym. Um, it was teaching you guys. I had so many places I'd already visited in Saudi that I loved and that I had so many plans to visit in the spring. Um, going back to the western side of the country and, and seeing so many things. I already had a, a, something arranged with um, like a private tour group and so forth. So I, I really had a full life in Saudi and I was really enjoying it for the time that I was going to be there for my contract. So um, that being said, um, I went ahead and just check my notes. Um, 
so fast forward to um, December 7th and 8th. So I was, after I was um, terminated, I was home for about a week. Um, I went ahead and reached out right away to Wafa. Um, and I, you know, had said, I right after the classroom was taken and then also after the termination, I just was like, what is going on? What's going on? Um, why does this new director have, um, why is she being allowed to act this way, this behavior? Um, it didn't make a lot of sense and it was illegal. <laughs> it wasn't even following the labor law. So, um, that week transpires and, um, the following week, um, that weekend I went to Bahrain and that was the 7th and the 8th of December. I got back on Saturday, the 8th of December. I had my bag from Bahrain. I had like some grocery bags and so forth. I went up to my, my home, my apartment, which of course the school provides. And, um, again, as an expat, you, you sign something that your, um, the company is your sponsor. So they're responsible for you. They're, they're responsible for taking care of you. Um, actually, I'm going to stop this. This is going to be part one. I just looked at the time. This is going to be part one. So I'll put this, the rest into another video.